Well, I feel tremendously honored and humbled by the receipt of this award. I think science is a very international endeavor and um, it's, it's really important now more than ever to have international cooperation to solve big problems and big issues in science. The International Space Station is a wonderful example of uh, international scientific cooperation among the many nations that participate. And the most recent project I worked on was a collaboration between NASA and the European Space Agency. Uh, I served as the American PI. My colleague, uh, Javier Medina, was the European PI. And in, in this project, we gained so much more working together than going at it alone. We gained truly uh, unique insights into the sensory physiology of plants. And um, I feel tremendously honored to work with international um, groups and teams. And I feel very honored to receive this award. Well, I could think of, of three different uh, career highlights for me. Uh, the first one is earning a PhD, a, a doctoral degree. So um, I'm the first one in my family to, uh, to go beyond the uh, eighth grade. And uh, it's been really great for me to obtain a university, undergraduate education, a graduate education, and uh, a PhD. Uh, the highest uh, academic degree. And part of this is the fact that I'm an immigrant to the United States. So I was born in Hungary and my family emigrated to the US when I was four years old. And uh, I've had tremendous opportunities, educational opportunities and earning and getting a PhD has really, um, of course, transformed my life and opened up so many new avenues. I would say the second career highlight is uh, being a university professor, uh, along with being a, a principal investigator for NASA. So as a university professor, I have um, a privilege to work with young people and um, I've had many students, undergraduate and graduate students who worked on these uh, projects with me with, uh, with NASA and the uh, European Space Agency. Um, and I've been really fortunate. I've had um, eight space flight projects. Seven of the eight were cooperations, collaborations with the Euro European Space Agency. And I've worked uh, with uh, Spain, um, Norway, France, Germany, the Netherlands on this last project. And it's, uh, it's, it's been really a, a great ride and, uh, and very fascinating. And I would say my third career highlight is the fact that I'm also the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at, our, at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. And this is our largest academic unit and I'm the um, chief academic officer of this unit. And I think it's really important for people in my position to be role models for the faculty in terms of um, excellence and research and teaching. And I've always uh, have strived to play in that role. So again, my three career highlights, I would say are earning a PhD, uh, especially given my background as an immigrant, um, serving as a professor and principal investigator on NASA projects, and also serving as the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Well, I think COSPAR is a really uh, wonderful international organization. The first meeting I attended was in 1996 in um, Birmingham, uh, England. And uh, I immediately found the society very attractive because it's international in nature. It's also very broad and interdisciplinary. Now I'm a, a, a life scientist, I'm a biologist. So that's Commission F in COSPAR. 
uh, there, are, there are, I don't know, about a dozen commissions on all different topics. Commission F, frankly, is a smaller commission, but that's fine. Uh, so I really get to learn about other aspects of space science um, and the particularly the evening interdisciplinary lectures are fascinating. Uh, for instance, at the last Coast Bar meeting, which was in Pasadena, California, there was a whole great uh, lecture on um, how do you discover exoplanets? And that's something I just don't know about as a biologist. So it's really great uh, in terms of um, international nature, learning about other topics in space science. I also have gotten to meet um, scientists. Uh, for instance, there was a group in Japan. The meeting was once in Nagoya and I attended that meeting and I had some uh, developed some collaborations with scientists from Japan and I ended up going several times to Japan to collaborate on projects and uh, just to, to give some lectures. So this has been really uh, very good. And also, you know, as an American, I mean, I think um, Coast Bar is always given an opportunity to have more interaction with countries we normally don't have um, very good contact with, for instance, uh, Russia and the former countries of the Soviet Union. Um, there was a meeting in Moscow, which was really fascinating because we got to see lots of um, current facilities and historical artifacts about space flight. So I, it's just really enhanced my career, uh, given me new opportunities in, in many ways. Yes, I do, and I think it's a really good question. Um, one thing I would say is that um, in your career, you need to take some risks. And um, many of us who are uh, on a successful career trajectory seem to become risk averse. But I'll, I'll give you an example of taking a risk. Uh, when I um, was first um, applying for, for spaceflight projects, to be uh, considered by NASA, um, I almost didn't apply because it's really hard to, uh, at the time, it's probably the same now, it's very hard to break into uh, becoming a, a space scientist or being a principal investigator in a space flight project. And I, I really almost didn't apply for the, my first project, which was a, a joint NASA ESA project and um, at, I did, and I'm really glad I did. I, uh, my proposal was, um, was accepted and selected. And, you know, I think like anything in life, you have to work hard and have some good ideas. And there's also some chance being at the right place at the right time. But my project turned out to be perfect for the kinds of things that NASA was looking for in this, in this joint effort with the European Space Agency. So that sort of takes some risks. Um, I think another really important advice for young people is uh, persistence. So you could argue, to take my own life, you could, you could argue that I've had some successes. Um, I've had many things that have not worked out. I've had manuscripts, papers that were not accepted to journals. I've had um, projects that have been turned down by NASA. I've had other grant proposals, but I was persistent. And I think um, if, if you get rejection and any successful scientist will have a long list of rejections, we tend not to talk about it, but I think you need to take any feedback, uh, try to take positive uh, feedback and move on and improve your ideas, refine your ideas. And if you're persistent, you will be successful ultimately. Um, I would say the third thing um, is, uh, is try to relax and have a balanced life. And um, I wasn't always so good at this. So uh, when I, going back to my topic of submitting proposals and projects and papers, I would really 
at times think about it and worry about it. I mean, you really basically do your best and then just let it go. And, you know, think about the broader things in life as well, your, your family, uh, your, your other uh, hobbies and loves that enrich your life. So I, I would say that the three things are uh, take some risks, be persistent and relax. My next project really builds on our, my previous work on the uh, International Space Station. So one of the interesting things that we've been studying on the International Space Station is how plants develop in reduced or fractional gravity. By that, I mean um, the gravity level on planets such as uh, the Moon and Mars. We actually know quite a bit about how plants um, grow and develop in the microgravity environment. Uh, plants have been part of the early Soviet American space missions, but we don't know that much about the Moon and Mars. And uh, the last experiments we did on the ISS uh, involved using a centrifuge. So we could actually uh, simulate or produce the Moon and Mars levels of gravity. And we made some really interesting discoveries. Um, the short answer is um, the Mars level of gravity, which is uh, 3 8 G compared to Earth, um, is pretty much the effects are the same as at 1 G on Earth. The moon level, there's some considerable differences. So the moon level of gravity, which is 1 6 G, um, there are some differences in the planet physiology. So I've been working with a, a planetary scientist at NASA Ames Research Center, and uh, we're developing uh, a small um, lunar greenhouse to grow plants on the moon. And um, we, we would like to send this on one of the uh, robotic missions that are going to the moon as a prelude to the human missions. And uh, I have to go back to your earlier question that I have to be persistent. Um, we have applied and we haven't been selected, but um, uh, we're refining our proposal and I hope one day to grow plants on the moon. I've grown them uh, in space and low Earth orbit. And that's sort of, I think, the next step for me.